Hello. New piece of equipment we're going to talk about today that I just received. It's a BNK Pro Dash 5 preamplifier. Before I show you the amplifier, uh, I want to tell you why I got it. Uh, a few months ago, I got this really good deal on this BNK EX 442 amplifier. This thing is beefy. And I've been this is now my main amp. I've been using this now for a few uh, months. It sounds really good, really warm, uh, tube-like, but it's a transistor solid-state MOSFET amplifier. It's really nice. Um, I don't have space for it yet, so it's kind of underneath hidden here. But this is the main thing, kind of out of sight. This is what powers my speakers. So I wanted to get a matching uh, uh, preamp for it. So this is it. it its shape is immaculate. No scratches, nothing anywhere, not on the front, not on the top, not on the back. Uh, now, before I received, uh, ordered this, I did a bunch of research. There's a uh, Pro Dash 5 and a Pro Dash 10. I tried to look for, to buy either of these units because they're both good in the used market like Facebook Marketplace or, um, you know, OfferUp or Craigslist or, or any of those. And I couldn't find any. I looked for the last six months, maybe more. But even prior to this, I was looking for them. Even before I acquired this, this amp, because I already had a BNK amp. I already had a ST125.2. Uh, so, even prior to getting that one, I was really looking into it because I was impressed with the sound of this. Also, very tube-like, uh, also very good amplifier. Uh, I got lucky and I bought this one for 200. I got luckier and I found this one for 75. And that actually came with four items. <clears throat> I got this amp. I got this NAD uh, 1155 preamp, which is, Top of the line preamplify as far as uh, how it sounds, how good it sounds from NAD. Like if you if you Google it, what's the best sounding NAD preamplifier? It's eleven fifty five. These these go for about three to four hundred dollars on eBay. These go for about I don't know five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Depends depends right on condition if it's working and all that. If it's if it has to be recapped or not. I got a pair of speakers. Uh, some Infinities Modulus, yeah, I got those, and which I sold already for $150 locally somewhere. I just, I just want to get my money back. I doubled my money, and then I, I also got a BNK AVR 1000 preamp, which I, I didn't really fit my knees because that's more like a multimedia amplifier. So I just gave that away to a friend of mine. Um, so I got my money back. I passed on the karma to another person. That, uh, Kept the two pieces of equipment. And now I just got this guy. Really nice. Everything um, sounds really good. I have only been listening to it for a few hours. It has a lot of digital inputs. All the knobs are ma made from aluminum. Metal. They're not plastic. Um, one of the things with this preamp that uh, if you look at some reviews is that people complain a little bit uh, that the, in the back the RCA connectors are not of the best quality. I think they're good. I think they're gold-plated, sound good. But I think the issue is on the inside, they're not soldered in the most proper, maybe best way. And if you are pulling the plugs really hard in and out over time, it maybe gets the connections loose. But that's really not a hard fix. You can just resolder those connections. If you're really pulling hard on the connectors, shouldn't be doing that to begin with. And if you really have so the connectors are really uh, tight like that and you're pulling back and forth, um, it's on it's on you really t to be on the lookout. And you can actually upgrade those RCA plugs. You can totally remove them if you want. I'm not doing any of that because I never use RCA connectors. Or like you have to pull on them really hard. So that's not an issue. And I've already looked inside this unit. First thing I did was check all the fuses. I've looked. Everything is pristine inside, inside out. So I really like it. How it looks. Um, I like how it sounds. I like its quality build and everything. I actually paid top dollar for this on eBay because there was only one list on eBay and I bought it. I wasn't aware of anyone else selling it. Like I said, I tried to find them. No one is really selling these. 
um and if they are i'm not i'm not lucky enough to find them so i actually paid with shipping and tax and everything four hundred dollars for this preamp but it's it, it is a well worth investment for me and it averages really well for me because i get all the other pieces of equipment really cheap like this was with 12 bucks and needed a new ribbon side this was 50 bucks probably worth two three hundred this is worth about three four hundred maybe even five hundred because this is the the rare japanese silver face editions are not even sold in the us they mostly come in black like this tape deck is worth 150 bucks i paid 15. You know, so some things I get lucky with. This thing's worth 300 and I paid, got it for free. You know, things like that. Um, so I, I didn't mind spending a little bit extra uh, or pay market price for equipment that uh, I'm going to enjoy. Um, okay, so has a lot of extra, has many inputs. Phono, tuner, CD, tape, digital, VCR has six different inputs. And six seven eight you can also use uh the tape there's tape one eight two so if you don't use that for tape you can actually use that for something else the nice thing about it is it has tone bypass so if you don't want if you want to bypass these just press this in that's what tone bypass um, uh your your controls for bass and treble it also has a direct bypass what well, this is so this is a preamplifier it actually pre-amplifies the signal but if you don't want to do that if you want to just use it as a management unit you can do that, a drag bypass, you just press that and it, it turns off pre-amplification pre as some other things. It came with this piece of paper, which is original. Uh, you can tell just by the paper, it tells you a lot about it. Um, it has, uh, it has a lot of good stuff in it. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna go over this, this paper in detail. But one of the cool things that this this unit has has two preouts, two, and what that is, so you can use just one of the preouts if you have one amp like this and you're good to go. But if you have mono blocks, if you want to dedicate an amp to each speaker pair, like left and right channel, then you would use two. So that's another that's another use. So that's second use. You can also use the second one for a subwoofer. That's number three, and number four, which is what I'm using now. I actually hooked it up, hooked up my tie system to this other uh, amplifier, and I just simply switch them on and off uh, to use whichever I want. And then this amplifier, this BNK, is hooked up my EPO speakers, my modern EPO speakers, which are amazing. And then this amplifier there is connected to my um, Fields SCS 1.0. And then my missions, 700s, 770s actually, they're connecting to this carver. And uh, what I use this for is when I watch movies and TVs and stuff like that and streaming things from, from my digital NAS box, which is over here. It has a whole bunch of movies and digital music files and everything. So when I want to stream from that, actually, that is connected over Toslink fiber optic cable on my TV. Then the TV outputs a fiber optic cable to this MODI. And then the MADI outputs RCA um, signal. Because you know this is DAC, so we'll convert from digital to analog and, and outputs left and right channel to this thing and that feeds it, these speakers. So that's uh I just kind of want it. Sounds really, really nice. Um I put in a this is the only super CD I have. Someone gave me this. So honestly, super D CD is supposed to be. Super audio CDs supposed to be superior CDs, and uh, they they probably have they probably are master better. I mean, not so much master better, just high quality bit rate or whatever kilohertz rate combination of those two probably. But uh, the, you know this this format is dead. This format is dead. No one is making super CDs anymore. They really screwed up. You can Google this. It's a combination of just greed, uh, overpricing, and too much control. Because they didn't want people to be able to to rip the audio from these, and they just screwed it up so badly that the, it killed the format. Um, and now with everything being digital music, that everything that they try to supersede me is completely worthless. Like, I still think that they could come, go back and make these. They could make them, but the problem, the issue is with super CDs that that you need to have a player that's compatible 
and supports Super CD, which this one does. This one supports uh, regular CD, Super Audio CDs, and DVD Audio. So DVD Audio is like surround sound audio, like think surround sound movies, but for audio. So you get surround sound audio, and maybe there's also video feed of, of like a concert. You can watch the concert, concert and listen to the audio surround sound. So it's a little bit different than two channel. And Super CD is just super version of the CD and two channel, and the CD is also just CD. CD alone is really good if if the if the if it was mastered and cor correctly recorded. Really, like I CDs is really good if. My opinion. I'll give you guys a quick uh, the demonstration. So right now I'm connected uh, to this amp, which is my Epo speakers. We'll listen just a little bit, and then we'll listen. Um, this isn't the best setup right now, but I'll show you why. So basically, when I want to switch speakers, what I do right now is I turn this off. Now there's certain capacitors still left over in the capacitors. They have to kind of drain themselves. It takes about 30 seconds or so. See that blue LED still lit, even though it's turned off. You just have to wait. So I literally just wait until that blue LED LED goes off. Meanwhile, we can warm up this amp and just turn this on. That's all I have to do. You have to, you have to wait until this is completely drained so that uh, you don't get any static noise uh, going from the speaker, from the other speaker that's turned off because this will happen if, if there's still a little bit of juice in, in it. So you just don't want to wait. It's kind of like a manual speaker switch. Now it's kind of off. And then uh, now you can put the volume up. And now my, my feels, feels, whatever, my words can set, they're running. Now, if you wonder how come I have uh, three speakers here, because different speakers have different signatures, sound signatures. Um, they can they can all be good, but slightly different good. They have you know like this is this is the classic British sound. This one is an American speakers with European drivers. Drivers are from nowhere, Norway and Denmark. This is all UK. The company is no longer around. Um, I mean, the original company has been sold a few times over since then. Uh, I think that's when they produced their best speakers. Their uh, EPOS, E-P-O-S, is still around under new management. Uh, I don't remember all details anymore. And they are, they actually produced, this is the EPOS ES-14. There's actually a new speaker called EPOS ES-14N. It's $4,200. It's very expensive, but it's, you know, new, new drivers, high, high quality, everything. I guess the manufacturing costs today are really high for, for it to make sense, to make a profit. But these in 1988, when they came out, I believe between 1988 and 1990, they originally cost $1,295, you know, plus tax and shipping, whatever. So if you just for inflation, um, I don't have a, 
that in my head might be approximately the same what the new speakers are today. Still a lot of money. Um, I, I, these sound so good to me and I got them used for $150 with a broken tweeter and I then redesigned this whole uh, tweeter baffle. Maybe I can talk about this just a little bit. I first redesigned the tw uh, tweeter baffle in red, kind of spice it up. Then I went back to black and I changed the material from uh, PLA to PETG. This is PLA, this is PETG. This is the original tweeter, but one of them is dead. I never, I only got it with one, the other one's broken. And these are unobtainium, they're very difficult to find. If you have an EPOS tweeter, if you're watching this video and you want to sell me an, uh, an original extra EPOS tweeter, please contact me if you have one. I tried everywhere. No one's listed it for sale on eBay. I tried other file groups, audio groups, vintage groups. No one has gotten to me. If you have this in storage and you want to, maybe your speakers are broken, whatever, just wasting away, I will buy one of these for you, from you, and potentially an extra woofer just in case for the future. So let me know. Okay. So that leaves me with an extra Net1155 preamp. Um, I'm just kind of sitting here for now. Really, I really like this piece of equipment too. And this sounds good. This sounds really good. I would say that the, that one sounds a bit different uh, and better. It's more lively, more airy, like more, more clarity, maybe a little bit more detail, but it's not off by much. This one also has all that stuff. It's just a bit different. I don't know how to explain it. This is also very good, very good. Um, not sure what I'm going to do with that, but I'm going to keep it, uh, if anything, as a backup in case something breaks. So that's about all I want to show you guys today. I don't want to uh, stretch it to show you that new piece of equipment. And, you know, at this point in this hobby, I have acquired pretty much everything that I need. <clears throat> my other thing, uh, my next upgrade and this is not in of any hurry whatsoever needed right now, would be a streamer. Right now, I'm using this uh, audio engine B1 Bluetooth streamer. So I'm actually connecting to this over Bluetooth, like my, using my cell phone or computer and streaming data to this. And then this is connecting in the back here. And I change it to here. And then I'm able to play. But it's not a standalone streamer. It doesn't have Wi-Fi. It doesn't have built-in Ethernet. It's it's it, because of the protocol, the Bluetooth protocol. It's a little bit limited. It sounds really really good. Like if I didn't tell you I had Bluetooth, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know at all. Uh, that's how it's, well it sounds. And it was only like a hundred bucks. I bought it a few years ago. But I really want to upgrade my game. Um, there's like no two out. There's a few other ones. Uh, I'm not sure what, what I'm gonna go with. I'm not in any hurry. And, um, but, you know, this might be a, a video for a while. I might not have any new content because really like I've assembled everything that I need right now. Unless unless I make a video about a different system in my, in my other room or something like that. Um, so that's it for now. Cheers.